Hey y'all, R7 doing this, your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range with my next installment on. Hey, I got this old used gun. The old used gun I got today is this guy, the AMT Automag 3. Hi. Now the Automag 3 is, it's a derivation. It's, it's well, these are manufactured by AMT Arcadia Machine Tool in. Uh, in Irwin, California. Uh, they are not an automag by design. They are not a gas operated, you know, automatic pistol by design. They're in fact a more or less a enhanced 1911 design. Uh, AMT bought the automag registered trademark and went about manufacturing various guns based on this design. Um, investment cast lower, investment cast upper. Um, it's a pretty good, pretty well designed gun, just to tell you the truth. And, and even though it's, well, it's what you might call a departure from convention. Okay. Uh, this particular one is in 30 caliber U.S. carbine caliber. And we're going to shoot it here a little bit. Yay! It, um, it has uh, standard hard plastic grips on it. It has a rocker type hammer block safety. Okay, so it's a hammer block safety rocker type, kind of like on a Walther, you know, that sort of thing. Slide stop, much in the same design as a standard 1911, as well as the magazine catch. It is a guide rod and system, which is, you know, it has a fitted bushing, much like a 1911 target pistol. Um, it has a slight swell in the muzzle, you know, and then the bushing is fitted to it. It has fully adjustable rear sights. Okay. It's just overall a pretty well appointed gun, even though the appearance of the gun is somewhat of a departure from convention. Uh, we're going to give this gun a try right here. I'm not going to shoot at a paper target. What I'm going to do is I'm going to nail some steels downrange and see what they look like. Music. Now, warning. I reloaded this ammunition with Magnum rifle primers. Large, small rifle Magnum primers. So we may not be able to get consistent, consistent ignition every time. Okay, 25 yard steel police silhouette. Here we go. Bam meow. Boy, that H110, that makes good carbine loads. And it sure hit it. And we hit it again. If you like the feel of an automag in your hand, it's not a bad gun. Oops, we didn't like that. Well, let's just punch it again and see what happens. There we go. All righty then. That's a nice little shooting gun. I hit that, you know, it's not a very definitive uh, test as to the accuracy of a gun, um, but Anybody who watches this channel knows what the targets are down range, and I nailed that one every time with an eight-round magazine. So, what do you actually do with a gun like this? Boy, I'm telling you what, coyotes hate this gun. Groundhogs hate this gun. Uh, wild hogs hate this gun. Uh, this is, you know, an outstanding sporting handgun. Um, in Kentucky, with saw point ammunition, you can legally take a deer with this gun. Um, it has a tremendous amount of power for no bigger of a cartridge than it is coming out of a five and three quarter inch barrel some automatic handgun. The magazines are kind of interesting looking. They look rather huge that way and <laughs> rather small this way. Now, let's talk about price. What's this gun actually worth in today's market? Well, 
the automatic two threes and so forth have been out of out of production now for about 20 years um, they command pretty good money uh, they made these guns in they made these guns in uh, every conceivable caliber that you could consider a magnum so they made them in 22 Winchester Magnum they made them in in uh, 30 caliber carbine uh, they manufactured them in, in uh, 357 they manufactured in 357 sig when the sig caliber first came out uh, they manufactured these in 45 ACP Magnum yes there is such a thing it's the wieldy cartridge um, and they manufactured them in 9 millimeter Magnum yeah, there is such a thing, a 9 millimeter Magnum. It's like a 9 by 31 or something. It's a big old long one. Looks like a 30 caliber carbine that had too much soup, beans, and cornbread. Um, but they manufactured these in 44 Magnum Automag. 357 Magnum Automag. But the most popular one of all is the 45 ACP Magnum. Now this is a regular 45 ACP, kind of like a gap in reverse, you know. Uh, instead of it being uh, an eighth of an inch shorter in the case of a gap, it was three quarters of an inch longer in the case of a uh, Wildy LAR 45 ACP. Uh, in today's market, this gun is in. 95% condition with very little wear showing. Uh, I would judge the value of this gun to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $450 to $550 based on A, the condition, and B, the rarity of the gun today on the market. Uh, they made tens of thousands of these guns in this caliber, but you don't see them for sale. People get them and they keep them and that drives the price up. Well, all right then, uh, that's about the size of it for the old Automag 3 30 caliber carbine from AMT. Uh, like, take, share, fire, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me an old dollar in the Patreon bucket if you want to, and if you don't want to, well, I just keep right on making content for you, whether you like it or not, okay? And if you like my content, keep watching it. If you don't like it, don't watch it. <laughs> let's uh let's keep being careful during these dangerous times the coof has pretty much subsided everybody's getting everybody's got any sense has got the shot uh and that's making everything back off a little bit now the goofs are another matter so if you're driving down the road and you happen to see a bunch of people standing down there that collectively couldn't make change for a dollar on a 65 cent purchase just turn around and go the other way all right then God bless everybody. Join the NRA, and we'll see you when we see you. Bye now. Over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me, is it worth it to buy, pay the money for AR-500 steel plate targets? Well, I think so. Here is an AR-500 one-third size police silhouette target or an IPSC style target that is 10 years old, that has been on the absolute most outrageous, out of frame public gun range in the Commonwealth of Kentucky that I'm the caretaker of. I mean, boys, it looks like the surface of the moon. A lead, a lead bullet won't even, won't even leave much of a mark on it. Okay. A steel core bullet will leave a little pock mark in it. Things like this are armor piercing bullets. Okay. Uh, but they're worth it. They are worth the money, I think. AR 500 targets are worth the money. I mean, if it hits up here on the edge like this, you know, down here on the edge, the edge of these things is like a sawtooth, you know, where it hits it on the edge and clips a little, flints a little piece of it off of there.
but for the most part this is the way it looked about five years ago when I reversed this target around to this side and this was the facing side five years later that other side this side is what it looked like five years ago when I reversed it okay so this has been the back side for several years five or more while this side has been getting all of the abuse uh, they do bow a little bit uh, this one's pretty straight you know this one hasn't uh, hasn't bowed a bit I've got another one over there that has slight bow in it but uh, I don't know is it worth it to buy AR500 uh, yeah if this was a mild steel target uh, it would have been in the scrapyard five years ago or even sooner all right just a little piece of information we'll see y'all